Hello and welcome to lecture 16 of computer aided engineering design. We will continue with our discussion on the design of Bezier segments and curves. Let me warn you beforehand that the mathematics is going to get quite involved from now on. We will start with Bezier segments first. We have informally introduced what Bezier segments are, but formally this is what the definition is. The position vector of a point on the Bezier curve is given by summation i going from 0 to n, n combination i times 1 minus u raised to n minus i times u raised to i times p i. This expression here is our Bernstein polynomial of degree n, u is a parameter and p sub i are the design points specified by u as a design. This is equal to summation i going from 0 to n, b sub i n of u times p i, the ith Bernstein polynomial parameter u varies between 0 and 1. We have seen this before when we are discussing Ferguson curves and also Bezier curves that individual segments they need to be of lower order preferably cubic. Once again to remind us we need this to minimize oscillations in a segment. If a Bezier segment is cubic, it will be needing four data points P0, P1, P2, and P3. We can call them as design points or control points. We have seen before that our individual terms emanating from the binomial expansion of 1 minus u plus u raised to n. You would know the expressions for the, I am going to be using those expressions directly. The position vector r u is given as 1 minus u raised to 3 times p 0 plus 3 times u times 1 minus u squared times p 1 plus 3 u squared times 1 minus u times p 2 plus u cube times p 3. I can expand these expressions and I can rearrange this equation. So, that I can get the coefficients of u cube, u square, u and a constant 1. These coefficients are minus p 0 plus 3 p 1 minus 3 p 2 plus p 3, 3 p 0 minus 6 p 1 plus 3 p 2 minus 3 p 0 plus 3 p 1 and p 0. And like we did this in case of a cubic Ferguson curve, we are going to be representing this expression in the matrix form or the compact form. This is a 1 by 4 matrix containing the terms of u, u cube, u square, u and 1. This is a 4 by 4 constant matrix with elements in the first row as minus 1, 3, minus 3 and 1. In the second row, 3, minus 6, 3 and 0. For the third row, we have minus 3, 3, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 0, 0. This here is a 4 by 3 geometric matrix P 0, P 1, P 2 and P 3 constituted of the data points that a designer has specified. This is a very similar expression that we see in case of cubic Ferguson curves. In short, this 1 by 4 matrix is represented by capital U in bold. This 4 by 4 matrix is represented by M sub B. 
B refers to the bezier segment and G is this geometric matrix. To reiterate, U is a 1 by 4 row matrix, M sub B is a 4 by 4 bezier matrix and G is a 4 by 3 geometric matrix. Recall that in case of cubic Ferguson curves, this geometric matrix had information pertaining to the two end points and the two end slopes. Let us take a look at an example. Let us say we are given control points P 0 by coordinates 1 0, P 1 by 4 and minus 5, P 2 by 6 and minus 6 and P 3 by 10 and 2. Let us compute the Bezier curve and further let us observe the shape change when point P 2 is moved from its previous location 6 minus 6 to a new location 7 and 8 and following that when point P 1 is moved from its location 4 minus 5 to a new location 9 minus 6. The position vector is given by x u y u. This is a 1 by 4 row matrix in terms of u. This is a 4 by 4 Bezier matrix and this is where we specify the geometry 1 0 for point P 1, 4 minus 5 for P 2, 6 minus 6 for P 3 and 10 2 for P 4. Working out the algebra is not very difficult here, so I will just give you the results. The x component is given by 3 u cube minus 3 u square plus 9 u plus 1 and the y component is given by 5 u cube plus 12 u square minus 15 u. Let us look at the Bezier curve graphically. This is the original set of control points. Let us join them together to form a control polyline. This is how the first Bezier curve looks. Now, let us move this point to its new location. This is the resulting polyline for which the Bezier curve is given by that in red. Let us now move this point to its new respective location. The resulting fall line and the resulting Bezier curve or maybe I should say these are all Bezier segments at degree what do we observe? Let me go back. Notice the shape of the blue segment and then the red segment and then the green segment. Question, is the change in shape local or global. You have it right. It is in fact global. A relocation of any data point changes the shape of the entire segment. We will worry about that a little later. Some properties of Bezier segments. segment. We have discussed properties of Bernstein polynomials before. A lot of the properties of Bezier segments can be directly derived from those of Bernstein polynomials. 
let us look at some of them. First, the endpoints of a Beza segment at parameter value u equals 0, the first Bunstein polynomial is 1, while all the other Bunstein polynomials are 0, which would mean that p sub 0, the first design point would be one of the end points of a Beza segment. Now, this is true for any n degree Beza curve. For parameter value u equals 1, the last Bernstein polynomial is 1, while all other polynomials are 0. This would mean that the last design point p sub n is another end point on the segment. End slopes or end tangents, these are given by the vectors p 1 minus p 0 and p n minus p n minus 1. These vectors would correspond to the first segment of the control polyline and the last segment of the control polyline. If you recall, we had computed the first derivative of Bernstein polynomials a while ago. If we compute this first derivative of a Bezier curve, you can find that this is given by summation j equals 0 to n p sub j times the first derivative of the Bernstein polynomial, the jth Bernstein polynomial of degree n that is equal to j going from 0 to n p sub j n times the j minus 1 Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus 1 minus the jth polynomial of degree n minus 1. We can bring in this summation sign inside. Once we do that, this expression here is equal to n times summation j going from 0 to n minus 1. b j minus 1 n minus 1 a function of u minus summation j equals 0 to n minus 1 p j b sub j n minus 1 again a function of u and that is equal to n times summation j going from 0 to n minus 1 p j plus 1 b j n minus 1 minus j going from 0 to n minus 1 p j b sub j super n minus 1. What have we done? We have simply raised the index of this term here and accordingly we have changed the limits here as well. We have the convention that b sub minus 1 super n minus 1 of u is 0. This is an exercise for you to determine why this is so. Once we use this information here, the first derivative of a Bezier curve would become n times summation j going from 0 to n minus 1 p j plus 1 minus within parenthesis times the jth Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus 1. Now, for u equals 0, all the other Bernstein polynomials except for the first one will be 0 and for u equals 1 all but the last one will be 0. We use this observation to find that the first derivative of 
Lebesgue curve at u equals 0 is given by n times t1 minus t0 and the slope of the curve or of the segment at u equals 1 is given by n times t n minus t n minus 1. We have just shown that this statement is true. Next, geometry invariance. From partition of the unity property of the Bernstein polynomial, the shape of the curve is invariant under rotation and translation of the coordinate frame. I recommend that you revisit the discussion on barycentric coordinates and a fine combination. There we had stated that when the weights in the combination come to 1, the shape of the curve does not change when the coordinate system is rotated or translated. Let me explain this concept on board. Let me draw the control polyline of any generic Bezier curve. And let me also sketch roughly the Bezier curve. You have seen that the segment will start from this point and it will end at this point. We have also seen that the first segment of the control power line and the last segment of the control power line will be tangent to the busy segment. This is how a typical busy segment will look. We we'll roughly discussed what the intermediate shape of a Bezier segment will look like, but that is for later. For now, the geometry invariance property states that no matter what coordinate system I use to express this segment, whether this or whether this or whether this one here. No matter what coordinate system I use to express the shape of a Bezier segment, this shape will remain unchanged. And this is due to the fact that the Bernstein polynomials, they all sum to 1, which would preserve the affine combination. This is an important property, the convex hull property. The barycentric nature of Bernstein polynomials ensures that the Bezier segment lies within the convex hull of the control point. For example, let this be a generic control power line and correspondingly let this be the Bezier segment. The question, how would you determine the convex hull for a set of points? I will explain that a little later. But for now, let the convex hull be given by this shaded area. For any value of parameter u, the entire curve will always lie within the convex hull of the given design point or data point. Let me explain 
how to draw the convex hull for a given set of data points. I start with first specifying the design points. Let us say this is my control polyline. Let me close the loop here and let me pose this question to you. Is this the convex hull for these data points specified? The answer to my question is no. Why is that so? By definition of a convex hull, if I choose any two points P 1 and P 2 within the hull and if I a straight line, then all the points in the straight line or in other words the entire straight line should lie within the convex hull. Now, let me choose two points here and here and let me join them using a line segment. You would notice that a part of this line is outside the hull. Let me choose another set of intermediate points and let me join them again using a line segment. Once again, this portion of the segment is outside the hull. The actual convex hull, which is unique for a given set of data points, can be sketched like so. You can use this definition and verify that for any two points within this hull, the corresponding line segment joining the two points will always lie within the convex hull. Note that this convex hull is unique for given data points. Going further into investigating the properties of these segments, variation diminishing problem. Here, we see or we observe how we can roughly depict the shape of a Bezier segment. For a planar Bezier segment, it can be verified geometrically that no straight line on that plane intersects with the segment more times than it does with the corresponding control polygon. Do not worry about the grammar of this long statement. I will explain this to you with an example. Let me start with a generic control power line again and let me draw the corresponding with the segment. This is a two dimensional example. An extension of this example in 3D would always also work. Now, let me first draw a line segment that intersects with the control polar line and the visa segment. In other words, this line segment is going to be cutting both the control polar line and the visa segment. Let us first plot the intersection points between this line and the control polar line. These 
are shown using blue circles. Let us now observe the intersection points between the BJ segment and its intersection line. Those are shown using red circles. Once again, the blue circles are the intersection points between the control polyline and the intersection line, and the red circles are the intersection points between the Bezier segment and this line segment here. What do we notice? We notice in this example that the intersection points in both cases in number are the same. Three blue circles and the three red circles. What this property says is the following. It will never ever happen that the number of red circles will be more than the number of blue circles. In other words, the number of intersection points between the segment and this line will never be more than the number of intersection points between the control polyline and the intersection line. This would physically mean that the shape of this Bezier segment will be no more complex than the shape of the control polyline itself. In other words, this control polyline roughly depicts or approximates the shape of the Bezier curve. I specify the data points again. and I sketch the control polyline. Let me sketch an arbitrary Bezier segment, starting from the first point, ending at the last point. Once again, the first and the last segments of the control polyline are tangent to the Bezier curve. Let us assume for now that the shape of the Bezier curve looks like this. Let me draw an intersecting line. You would notice that the number of intersection points between the Bezier segment and this line would be a lot more than the number of intersection points between this control power line and this intersecting segment. What the property says is that such a scenario is never possible. In fact, the actual Bezier segment can be roughly sketched like so. To re-emphasize, this is not a possibility. And this is an approximate In a three dimensional case for a spatial Bezier curve, the property holds for a plane intersecting a three dimensional Bezier segment and its control polygon. This is what I have said before that the shape of a Bezier segment is no more complex than its 
control polygon and it is roughly predictable by the ladder. Continuing with the property, no local control. The shape of a BJ segment changes globally for any data point moving to a new location. Let us try to analyze this property algebraically. Let a control point P sub k be relocated along a specified vector v. So, the new Bezier segment r super new will be given by summation i going from 0 to n and i not equal to k. The terms in the summation are the ith Bernstein polynomial of degree n times the control points p i plus the kth Bernstein polynomial of degree n times the new relocated control point p sub k plus b. What we can do is we can bring this term back into this summation to get i going from 0 to n in summation terms b sub i super n times the design points plus b sub k super n times the vector v. This is equal to the original Bz segment plus an additional term b sub k super n a function of u times the vector v. We see that every point on the old Bz segment r u gets translated by the term b sub k super n times v. So, note that this is actually a vector. So, individual components x, y and z of the Bz segment will get translated. Once again, every point on the old Bz segment gets translated by the term b sub k super n times b, implying that the shape of the entire segment gets changed. Let us look at some derivatives of Bz segment. The first derivative total r u over total u is given by summation i going from 0 to n, n times the i minus 1th Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus 1 minus the ith Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus 1 times the design point p i. This term here is nothing but the first derivative of Bernstein polynomial b i super n. We can take this term n out and expand this expression to get n summation i going from 0 to n b i minus 1 super n minus 1 times p i minus n times summation i going from 0 to n b sub i super n minus 1 times p i. What we do is we write the first term of this expression separately and we write the last term of this expression again separately. So, this is the first term in this expression or in this summation and this is the last term in this summation and these are the rest of the terms in this expression. This is n times b minus 1 raised to n minus 1 times p 0 plus n times summation i going from 1 to n b i minus 1 n minus 1 times p i 
minus n times i going from 0 to n minus 1, b sub i super n minus 1, p i minus n times b sub n super n minus 1 times p n. By convention, b minus 1 n minus 1 is 0. Likewise, b sub n super n minus 1 is 0. This is an exercise for you to find why this is so. We are left with these two terms and we combine them together to get n times summation i going from 0 to n minus 1, the ith constant polynomial or degree n minus 1 times within parenthesis the i plus 1th design point minus the ith design point. What do we see? If you try to compare this expression with an nth degree Bezier segment, we observe that this is very similar to that. The only difference is there we had the position vectors of the design points, but here we have three vectors. The degree of this curve will be n minus 1. So, a Bezier segment of degree n minus 1, but with three vectors is obtained and this segment is called a Hodo graph. How would a Hodo graph look? Let us consider a cubic Bezier segment. Notice that these vectors are free vectors. This is P 1 minus P 0, P 2 minus P 1 and P 3 minus P 2. This would mean that I can move around these vectors any way I want. This curve is a Bezier curve. Let us move these three vectors at will. I show here only one of the cases, rather one of the many cases. I coincide the tails of all these three vectors at the origin of the quadrant. The tips here will lie on this green curve, which is the holograph. In any other case, I could have moved these three vectors anywhere else I would have wanted. What am I suggesting? That this green curve, the holograph, is not unique. Let us look at some higher order derivatives of these segment. d 2 r over d u square is given by n times summation i going from 0 to n d over d u of b sub i super n minus 1 times p i plus 1 minus p i. This expression here relates to the first derivative of the Bezier segment. I can work the algebra in detail. Let me not worry about the intermediate steps, but I will have them for you on the slide just in case you want to take a look at leisure later on. A note here, this term here will become 0 because there is a negative 1 index here for the Bunsen polynomial. And likewise, this term here, a 
again will become 0, because the index over here is larger than the degree of the Bernstein polynomial. By convention, we make these Bernstein polynomials 0. Of course, there is a reason and I have asked you to find out this reason yourself. Likewise, here the index is larger than the degree of the Bernstein polynomial. And so is the case here. Anyhow, this is one of the final results n times n minus 1 summation i going from 1 to n minus 1, the i minus 1 Bernstein polynomial or degree n minus 2 times i plus 1 design point minus the i th design point minus n times n minus 1 summation i going from 0 to n minus 2, the i th Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus 2 times t i plus 1 minus t i. We rearrange this expression to get the final result as n times n minus 1 summation i going from 0 to n minus 2 the ith Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus 2 now times t i plus 2 minus 2 t i plus 1 plus t i. If you carefully observe, this is actually p i plus 2 minus p i plus 1 minus of t i plus 1 minus t i in parentheses. Likewise, we can compute the third derivative of a beta second. That is given by n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 summation i going from 0 to n minus 3 b sub i super n minus 3 times t i plus 3 minus 3 t i plus 2 plus 3 t i plus 1 minus t i. The algebra should not be very difficult, it should be straightforward. You should be able to compute and verify this result. We can generalize these results. We can say that the kth derivative of a Bezier segment is given by n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 up till n minus k plus 1 summation i going from 0 to n minus k. What do you expect now? You are right, you are expecting the ith Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus k. Observe right here, ith Bernstein polynomial of degree n minus 3 for the third derivative. What I have done is I have generalized these expressions by d sub i super k. If I start with d sub i super 0 as my original control points d sub i, then I can have a recursive relation given by d sub i super j is equal to d i plus 1 j minus 1 minus d i j minus 1. j would represent the derivative. For example, j is equal to 1 will give the first derivative, j is equal to 2 will give the second derivative and so on and so forth. j is an index that goes from 1 to n and i is an index that goes from 0 to n minus j. For example, d i 1 is equal to d i plus 1 0 minus d i 0. This is t i plus 1, this is t i. d 
di 2 is equal to di plus 1 1 minus di 1. What is di plus 1 1? Use a similar expression here. This is di plus 2 minus di plus 1 minus di 1. Get this expression directly over here. di plus 1 minus di. A little rearrangement will give you di plus 2 minus 2 times di plus 1 plus di. Likewise, what is d sub i super 3? To get d sub i plus 1 super 2, all we need to do is raise the index of this by 1. That is correct. We will get d i plus 3 minus 2 d i plus 2 plus d i plus 1. We already have the expression for this d i 2 right here. This is d i plus 2 minus 2 d i plus 1 plus d i. Rearrange to get d i plus 3 minus 3 times d i plus 2 plus 3 times d i plus 1 minus d i, which is the expression right here. 